Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, and today I want to bring you guys a little test and a little demo. Um, I'm one of the lucky few who actually has received his Ursa Mini 4.6K, um, and I've had it for a few weeks now. And I just recently took it out to uh, NAB in Las Vegas and shot some stuff, and I got a lot of questions from a lot of people who saw me with it, um, asked me questions about issues I may be having with it, or if any of these rumors are true about problems with it. And one of the ones that everyone's been asking me about is the uh, magenta cast. There's a rumor that there's a magenta cast on the sensor, um, and that it's not necessarily even, that it can show up around the edges and be really hard to grade out. So I didn't notice any of it while I was shooting, um, but I wanted to do a definitive test and go and see if indeed this sensor has that issue. So today what I've got here is I have my Ursa Mini 4.6K uh, set up and running here and aimed at an all white target. Um, so it's completely even white. Uh, it's got some scuffing and marking on it, but that shouldn't make a difference for our purposes. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm lighting it with a, uh, an Aperture Light Storm light here. These are high CRI LEDs, and that's important because I don't want an LED that's going to be casting its own green or magenta cast on the target. So I've got everything white balanced. The camera is seeing the target as perfectly white and perfectly even. So we should be able to run through the different ISOs on this camera and be able to see if we are indeed getting a magenta cast that comes from the camera itself. So the way this is gonna work is I'm going to run through all of the ISOs that are available on the camera, 200, 400, 800, and 1600. Now I'm going to be shooting these using the full sensor. You have an option of full or windowed on the camera. So I'm going to be going to full to see if the issue is indeed at the edges. And I'm gonna be shooting in 4K. I'm gonna be recording in ProRes. Technically the recording format really shouldn't matter um, because apparently this is a sensor issue. So no matter what you record, it would theoretically show up. So let's go ahead and let's get in here and let's start testing and see if this sensor does have a magenta cast issue. So we've got my first test lined up here. I've got the camera at 200, 200 ISO, and we are recording the target. We are at F4 on the lens, and I'm making sure not to blow anything out because I want to make sure that there is data in there. So that's 200 ISO. Okay, so now we have reset. We have the camera at ISO 400, and to keep our exposure matching, um, I have stopped it down one stop to f5.6. So this is f5.6 with the camera running at ISO 400. Okay, now we have adjusted again. We've gone up a stop in ISO to ISO 800, and down a stop on the lens to f8 to match our exposure. So this is the Ursa Mini 4.6K at ISO 800. And here we go again. We are now maxed out at ISO 1600 on the Ursa Mini 4.6. And I've stopped the lens down to F11. So again, up a stop of ISO, down a stop on the lens to match our exposure. And we'll let this run through here. And so there you go, guys. We just went through and we did all of our tests at all of our different ISOs, 200, 400, 600, and 800. Now, to my eye on the monitor, I couldn't see any magenta cast happening, but that doesn't mean that it isn't there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this footage into our editor on the computer. Adobe Premiere is what I'm gonna be using. And we're gonna take a look at it there. And then I'm also going to add saturation to it. So if there are any colors in there, any magenta or anything that's not supposed to be there, hopefully they'll present themselves. So I'm gonna go and crank the saturation and see what we get from those clips that we just shot. Okay guys, so here we go. I've brought the clips into Premiere, taken a close look at them. You already saw on screen the untouched uh, footage as I did the tests, but here we go. I went into Lumetri Color and started messing with the saturation on these clips to make any colors pop out. So here is ISO 200 at 200% 200 saturation, and you can see 
that there is indeed magenta, um, particularly around the edges. Um, now that may be a little bit due to the uneven exposure, I didn't do the greatest lighting job, but it is definitely there. We move up to ISO 400 again at 200%, and it looks like we can see a bit more coming in. Again, isolated to those edges. ISO 800 uh, seems to perform about the same, maybe even a little bit better than the two lower. And ISO 1600 actually looks pretty good, but you can see it coming in on that right hand side, uh, creeping in from the edges, particularly in that top corner there. Now here we go to the extreme, another doubling of the saturation to 400%. And yeah, I think it's pretty clear that there is magenta happening here. ISO 400, same deal. Uh, plenty of magenta creeping in. ISO 800 again seems to perform a little bit better than the two below, um, but again, definitely magenta cast um, overall. Looks like there might be some blotchy spots without it down there in the, uh, the lower left. An ISO 1600 actually looking not too terrible for the majority of the frame, but Again, off to that side, that right side is where it's really heavy, particularly in the, uh, the corners there. So there you go, guys. There is a test looking at the magenta shift or magenta cast on the Ursa Mini 4.6K sensor. As we saw in those tests, yes, there is a magenta cast to this sensor. However, I do want to point out that it was at 400% or 200% saturation that we were running into these issues being extremely apparent. Um, but you're never going to use an image that's saturated to 400%. A 400% saturated image looks like this. And this is on the 4.6K. I would never ever use a final image like this. So if we go back, the image looks really good. I have no qualms with the way the image looks. The magenta is not enough for me to have an issue with this camera. And it is something that may be corrected in firmware uh, later on down the line. So for me, this is not a deal breaker. I'm still very happy that I purchased the camera. I'm very happy with the camera, um, but don't let me uh, you know, steer you in one direction or another. If this is something that bothers you and you think that this issue should be corrected or, or you should be getting more for your money, even though it's a low priced camera, you know, that's a decision that you are going to have to make. So I hope this test helped you guys out. Um, hope it gave you some perspective on, you know, whether this is really going to be a prevalent issue or not. Um, and please subscribe to the channel, guys. I plan on doing a lot more tests with the, uh, the Ursa Mini um, and looking into some of the other possible issues that have been reported out there. So stay tuned to the channel, guys. Please subscribe.